Today on CityCast DC. It's official. The city is moving ahead with changing the name of Good Hope Road in Southeast to Marion Barry Ave to honor DC's mayor for life. But is this a good idea? Is it performative, respectful of Barry's legacy? Back in December, my CityCast DC co host Mike Schaefer and I sat down to discuss. <laughs> It's Tuesday, May 7th. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. Hey, Bridget, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Today, we get to talk about a street renaming, but get this. Instead of the controversy being about whether someone's name ought to get yanked off a street, it's about whether someone's name ought to be put on a street. Yeah. So essentially what's going on here is Ward 8 Council Member Trayon White recently introduced emergency legislation to rename the entirety of Good Hope Road to Marion Barry Avenue in honor of the late great mayor for life, Marion Barry. I should say this is not like a ceremonial renaming. This is like a real legit renaming about a thousand people who live on Good Hope Road would have to change their addresses. Like, it's a real thing, not just ceremonial. Barry, who we know and love as mayor for life, as you probably know, did two stints as DC's mayor. He served on DC council before his death in 2014. He is kind of like a beloved figure in DC. Like, my parents have a framed picture of him in their home and always did when we were growing up. So as you said, Mike, it sounds like Nobody disagrees with this measure to rename Good Hope Road. It's the process, which I feel like is a very DC thing. It's like, oh, I don't, I'm not upset about what you're doing. It's just how it's being done. Right. Okay. So, and as an old city council reporter, I love nothing more than a legislative process controversy, <laughs> whether it Why should be emergency surprised? legislation or not. But how about we not talk about that and instead talk about like, what do you think? Should we rename a street for Marion Barry? Oh, I mean, I'm kind of a Debbie Downer about this. I obviously am a Black person who's lived in D.C. for a long time, and my parents have a legacy as, like, Black folks with, like, D.C. roots. So obviously I am pro Marion Barry. I'm not a big fan of, like, renaming streets, uh, statues in people's honor. I feel like it's kind of the lowest form of honoring someone. I think ultimately, I like Marion Barry. This is DC. I think we should have it. It would be fine to have a street named after him. In general, I think that conversations around how you memorialize important figures, I think they're just like too hung up on statues and street names. And it kind of keeps us from thinking of like other ways we could actually honor their legacy. So I'm a little bit of a Debbie Downer. That's probably not the answer you were looking for. But what what do you think? Do you think that they should be renaming Good Hope Road in honor of Marion Barry? I'm kind of the opposite of you here. I think renamings are kind of cool. You know, a city is a collection of people going through history and renaming things after the important people who've been meaningful is like basically a good thing. Otherwise, it feels a little bit like a museum, you know, like everything, all the namesakes are already established and there's nothing we can do to alter the place. So I like that. I think Marion Barry was like an incredibly complicated legacy. And in a lot of ways, like a he's like the best politician, the best like leader <laughs> of people that the city has ever produced. He also was a really problematic public servant whose actual success at the work of governing, of running the government of the District of Columbia was like mixed at best. You you can kind of, uh, because he was this like protean figure, you can kind of find anything in his legacy. He was one of the first politicians, maybe the first in DC, to really see power in like the LGBT community, making that Mm -hmm. part of his alliance. And then in the last years of his life, he was basically doing homophobic appeals against same-sex marriage. And you can find almost anything else where there's like these tremendous contradictions In the guy's legacy, I think people are complicated. And the fact is, the citizens of the District of Columbia four times opted to make him their mayor. For a lot of black people in D.C., he was sort of the first mayor to, like, include the community in government. So, like, I think that's reason enough to to rename something. The weird thing is, like, if you go to, like, Paris or something, um, there are, like, there's avenues, places, metro stations named after all kinds of people. You can find all kinds of stuff. And in Washington, you, you kind of can't because the, the way our city is like laid out, 
the way that the map works, there's actually, there ain't that much to rename. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, you've got an alphabet going one way and you've got numbers going another way and then you've got all these state avenues. And that means that that there's actually not that many other roads with like without someone's name already on them. So like Good Hope Road, we can stipulate we all love Good Hope, but there's no constituency there that's going to be pissed off about having the name changed. Right, right. So it, do, it does sort of speak to the particular challenges of renaming streets in honor of people that is D.C. specific, right? I mean, I'm not going to pretend to know how other cities' streets are laid out, but the way that D.C. streets are laid out, it does create this unique challenge for renaming a street. Correct. And look, at renaming streets, I mean, as the people of whose home address is Good Hope Road are about to learn, renaming streets is hard. You know, your whole life you've been saying, take a left down Good Hope. And then all of a sudden you can't say that anymore. And then half the people still call it Good Hope and half the people will call it Barry. If you wanted to go around renaming everything in sight, you would not actually have that much opportunity with major streets because most of them are already spoken for or it would kind of screw up the map if you if you got alphabetical order wrong or something. Totally. I feel like this is something that is being left out of the conversation, both the procedural kind of vote conversation and the overall like, does Marion Barry deserve this? It's a pain in the ass to have your street renamed. I'm not saying I'm against it. But it's going to be a pain in the ass for them. And we should acknowledge that and honor that as well. And I feel like that is kind of going missed in the conversation. This is one of the reasons why I'm a little bit of a Grinch about these kinds of things. Like, I don't know how we got to a place where all of our streets are named after, like, political figures we have all of these statues. Like I remember during the 2020 racial justice uprisings when we're having the whole conversation about statues in Richmond, like, should they come down, these Confederate monuments? And my whole thing was, why did why were they up in the first place? Like, I don't know. I think it would be healthier for society if we broadened our expectations around what we name things after and why. And I, I just wonder, like, why is it always political figures and wouldn't it be like better if we opened up our mind a little bit and sort of broadened the expectations around who we name things around to honor? That's just my thing, my thoughts. Um, like what kind of people would you want or, or oh. would it not be people at all? Oh, I respect the question and appreciate the question. I would say that political figures are not the only people who have a big impact on a citizenry, right? And so right here in D.C., freaking... Marvin Gaye is from D.C., right? Like, so many cultural icons are from D.C. And I would say that they've had a huge hand in shaping the legacy of what D.C. looks like. And I know there are some streets named after, you know, cultural figures, and that's great. But I, like, I remember reading this Onion article. It was, they were joking about it, but it was like, oh, the statue of Thomas Jefferson on UVA's campus is being ripped down and they're replacing it with a statue of Clips or Missy Elliott. And I was like, oh, I know it's a joke, but like, wouldn't it be great if our street names did feel contemporary and our statues and our monuments to people did feel like a living, breathing thing that wasn't so like politicized and partisan and it actually was a celebration of like people that everybody can get behind, you know? Totally. I mean, I guess it's more politicized is with the kind of grid being what it is in D.C., they do these sort of honorary renaming, so these temporary, like in the Cold War, they renamed the stretch outside the then Soviet embassy uh, after, I think it was Sakharov, after one of the dissidents. But it was just sort of like a way of giving the finger to the uh, people working inside the Soviet embassy. When they did Black Lives Matter Plaza, it was sort of the same thing, except it was a political gesture against the then president of the United States, which is the United States was the country being tweaked by the gesture. But that's not formally speaking. If you were to put a letter in the mail saying, you know, going to one Black Lives Matter Plaza, I think the mail would not know what to do with that because it is legally speaking still 16th Street. Correct. Yeah. I, I know that when I was teaching at Howard many, many years ago, I had a student who was like tragically shot and killed around 4th of July right outside of the university, and they renamed a stretch of Georgia Avenue in his honor. And I was like, oh, that's so great. And they had a whole ceremony. But the street name is still there. There's just a little placard underneath the official. So it's like the, the street, for better or worse, has two names, right. but the official name still stands. And so 
I wonder, is there any sense of why this legislation is seeking to do an official renaming where folks have to change their addresses and their mail is going to be different and all of that, as opposed to just a ceremonial renaming? Oh, I think it's just, it's real, right? For a certain uh, percentage of the population, more now than when Barry was in his prime. But Barry was like an embodiment of the black community. And so to rename a street for him is to give the community its due and to do some sort of like half-assed performative not renaming without renaming is to give the community half its due. It's not any more complicated than that, but you know and I know that this is the single easiest thing for the authorities to give, right? Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. let's put up a statue or name something. That's like a much easier give than like matters of substance having to do with like the resources of society. Exactly. And I guess when I was rambling through my, like, why I hate renaming streets and yada yada, wouldn't it? So, yes, there is not any kind of institutional pushback against this. In fact, it's just like painting Black Lives Matter on a street. It doesn't really take that much. What if instead they put more money and funding into Marion Barry's summer youth employment program or something that would be like a more substantive way to honor the good parts of his legacy, I would totally get behind something that was like a more substantive, you know, not just a like, oh, we're just renaming this. Isn't that great? Kind of nod to his legacy in the city. But if you're really about honoring someone's legacy, I just think there are better ways to do it than changing a street. That's how I feel. I'm with you. Although I guess I just, I feel like the map of a city in a weird way, it's like saying, hey, you matter. That's such a good point. Like that street name decision, it's not about anybody having strong feelings one way or the other about like municipal budgeting or programs he was associated with, or programs he succeeded or programs he ran into the ground or anything like that. It's it's like, a, hey, this is like one of us and you put his name on something and it's like a sign of saying like, you matter. So let me ask you this. If you could rename any DC street to be anything, what are you going with? Bridget Todd Avenue. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's such a good question. Because I think you're right. Like, it's too much presidents and potentates and so on. Like, we've got the Duke Ellington Bridge. That's really cool. It's cool in the sense that this was like an American original and like a tremendous musician, artist. But it's also cool in the sense that like, same way it's saying like, hey, that stuff matters. Music matters. Art matters. Culture matters. It's not just presidencies that that matter. Marvin Gaye would be pretty good. That would be a pretty good choice, I think. Yeah, I would go with Marvin Gaye. And I can't believe there was never any kind of conversation about like, ooh, wouldn't it be great if Marvin's was on Marvin Gaye Boulevard or Marvin Gaye Way? Mm -hmm. No, but I want to live in a world where we honor more than just men who hold electoral power. I feel like we have monuments to men who hold political and electoral power everywhere, every time we open our eyes. And I would love it if we memorialized other things as well. I also think it would be kind of cool to have more stuff named for people who are foreign, because that's just a, that's another form of aspiration. Like, you know, he's not my hero or anything, but like in Montgomery County, there's a high school named for Churchill. But just in the sense of it being like world as the range of options, I think that's kind of cool instead of it just having to be like, well, we'll only name things for someone who grew up in this neighborhood or something. Yeah, I would like that, too. Finding ways to honor just different kinds of people, different kinds of legacies. That certainly includes people who are not necessarily Americans, like people who are not political power holders. Yeah, I just, I like that. I like the idea of kind of opening up who we honor in that way. Right. So I don't know, who else would you pick? Ooh, well, other than Michael Schaefer, (laughs) I liked your idea of honoring something that's not a person, like an idea or, you know, like statehood way or... Good hope. I don't know. Good hope. Yeah, I, I like I like good hope. <laughs> or maybe Kojo Namdi way, you know, something like that. Like, I'm there completely are some... against naming stuff for people who are alive. I feel like it's inviting. Oh, really? It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like laughing at the gods. Yeah, it's all, oh, it's so true. It's like you get a tattoo of like your favorite musician and then like, a year later, he's accused of something awful, and you're like, "Well, oh, good, good thing I got this tattoo." You, just, you need to let that legacy <laughs> like lie. I remember, I, speaking of Barry, Tom Sherwood, the reporter, he used to joke with Barry that he'd already taped a lengthy, lengthy, lengthy obituary for him, and so he would see him and say, hey, "Listen, don't do anything dramatic because I've already done your obituary." <laughs> um, but that's sort of how I feel about street renamings. 
So you think it has to be someone who is no longer with us. So their yes. legacy is sort of like solidified, it, like no surprises. Now we know that historians can always dig up things that turn out to be surprises many years later. But the odds of them doing something that's going to substantively alter their reputation are pretty low once they die. And also with Mary and Barry, I feel like we've come to learn a lot about the complexities that made him up as a man. Like I, I don't know what could really surprise us half, at this point. <laughs> I don't even want to know. <laughs> Mike, it is always fun to talk about niche DC issues with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. I'll see you soon. And before you go, here's some quick news. Metro wants D.C. Council to give transit police the authority to demand IDs from fare jumpers. They say it would help them find people who commit more serious offenses and ultimately make Metro safer. Metro already has this authority in Maryland and Virginia and is generally trying to crack down on fare evasion. Meanwhile, the H Street Auto Zone and its parking lot are likely to turn into the largest development in the area. The newly released renderings show it will have about 11,000 square feet of retail space with 200 apartment units, mostly one bedrooms. Some of the ground floor apartments will also have front yards and green space. And lastly, D.C. statehood is on the table, at least in holiday form. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton introduced legislation that would make May 1st D.C. statehood day. And if you're into symbolism, then the 5-1 date should come as no surprise for the U.S.'s hopefully 51st state. We'll see if Congress will make it official, though. And lastly, here's your D.C. life hack. For anyone out there interested in getting married quickly and quietly, D.C. law lets you self-certify your own marriage. No officiant or witnesses needed. Just go to dccourts.gov to learn more. That's all for today here on CityCast D.C. If you enjoyed the show, tell someone who could rename a street after us. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then. It's not like the the Good Hope family is out there defending their family name and wanting to keep it on Good Hope Road. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, that would be pretty funny. Are we against Good Hopes now? Is that the idea? No, we should always be pro Good Hope. That's something everybody can get behind. (laughs) I think so.